Alright, so next thing we're going to be doing is counting, uh, counting ourselves. So these are SKESs. First thing I do uh, immediately before and after working with cells is looking at them under the microscope, uh, making sure that they're all healthy and adhered to the back of the flask. So they look good. So for counting, it all starts exactly the same as splitting. And so remember for the big flask, we would add five uh, or 10 mils of PBS and three of trypsin. For the small flask, it's gonna be half of all the amounts. So first thing we're gonna do is vacuum off the media, just like for splitting. So inevitably you will drop this at some point and it'll flop on the floor. Just spray it with alcohol generously, put it back in and it'll be fine. I'm going to vacuum off the media. Again, I go to the front corner, front corner because all the cells are on the back. Tip it up, let it drain down. All right, so for a small flask, I'm gonna add five mils of PBS. Making sure my lids are loose before, before I put the pipette on. So even if I just like accidentally touch the side of the bottle, just throw it away, get a new one. Five mils of PBS. PBS always runs down the front of the flask. Slosh it around a couple times. Just rinses off the serum. Vacuum off the front corner. So now we're going to add trypsin. For a big flask, it's three mils. For a small flask, it's a mil and a half. If I did this and I pulled up too much and I brought it out and thought, oh, pulled up too much, I can't pour it back in. Just dump it out into a beaker. So what the trypsin's doing is it's breaking the cells off the back of the flask so now I can run it down the back. There's trypsin in there, slosh it around and put it in the incubator for a couple minutes. The cells are in the incubator right now. Um, so we're going to get a couple things ready um, for counting. We're going to clean the hemocytometer and we're going to get a vial for counting. So this here is my hemocytometer. We just keep it right there in the chem wipes. So there's a hemocytometer and the cover slip. So whenever I'm cleaning these, I like to have it right here over, um, over the counter. So if I drop anything, it won't break. Just a little bit of alcohol, splash it on there. It on there and always a chem wipe never a paper towel um, biggest thing that I want to get off are just smudges or fuzz from the chem wipe so that's really going to interfere with my counting looks good Also going to need a little vial, which are here. So get one of these, and this is what I'm going to put the cells into before I count. So 
So again, anything going into the hood, unless it has cells in it at the moment, gets sprayed down. So I'm going to close it first. Spray it a couple times. Good, that should be ready to go. So, cells should be done in the incubator. So again, the trypsin in the incubator just gets the cells uh, not adhered to the back of the plate. So they're still stuck a little bit. You see that uh, some of them are moving and some aren't. So I'm just going to lightly tap it like this. Again, I keep it tipped just slightly to where I'm not bringing it anywhere close to the lid. They're all floating. Wiggle a little bit. You see none are stuck to the plate now. So I have the cells in there. So now we've got the media, got the hemocytometer, we've got the vial, we've got the cells that are not stuck anymore. So we're ready to roll. Um, so we had 15 in here originally, so I'm going to bring it all the way back up to 15. And if it's a large flask, it holds 30 overall, so I bring it up to 30. So, so there's currently a mil and a half in there of trypsin. So we're just going to add 13 and a half media to bring it all the way up to our starting 15. Loosen my lids. Always opening it from the top side, never the tip side. Turning it to where the, uh, the easy measurements are facing me. Don't do that. So I'm adding 13 and a half. It also would help if your pi pipette is on. Also, if you have to set down the cap or the lid to something, Set it down on the top. If you're holding it, hold it like RJ was doing. So that's 13 and a half mils. Now there's a total of 15 in there. I'm gonna mix it up because clumps are not my friend whenever I'm counting. The more broken up the cells are, the better for counting. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes doing this. Making sure not to blow bubbles going down and not going up into the cotton going up. All right, so I've been mixing this for a couple minutes now. Um, there really isn't anything, um, there isn't such a thing as over mixing because any clumps is really gonna mess me up counting. So from here, I'm just gonna keep about half a mil of my cells and drop it into my vial. And the reason I do that is because I need a micro pipette tip to put the cells on the hemocytometer, and I can never put a micro pipette inserted in here or here or here. Um, if I need anything out of these, I'm always going to drop it in a vial and then go micro pipette to what I need it to go to. So my micro pipettes are up here. I'm gonna get the 10 microliter one. I'm gonna adjust it up to 10. 10 microliters. I'm going to spray the tip, but never the handle. So if I spray it up in the handle, it gets all in the mechanisms of it and messes it up. I'm going to make sure that the tips that I'm using matches the micro pipette that I'm using. So this goes up to 10 microliters. This goes up to 10 microliters. So I've got it set to 10. Go only to the first stop. It's 10 microliters in my cells. I'm gonna put it on the hemocytometer. So all I do is I put my tip right on the groove and very gently push down 
and it all just slides right under the cover slip. And I pull it away um, before I let go, I'm not sucking up any cells back. And I drop into a beaker. Okay, so now that I have a beaker, um, check that, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Tip. First stop. Up. I'm gonna push all my cells out right into the groove. Install runs right under the cover slip. Right, so we're ready to go to the microscope. So this is my state of the art cell counter. So to start it, I want to get it to where it's right on the top groove, right where I put the uh, pipette tip to begin with. This is a lot easier to see through the microscope, but I'm going to show you on the computer just so you can see what's going on. So now I've got it on the groove. This is at the lowest power. Once I've found the groove, I'm going to move it up. right to where I see my grids. Beautiful. And so once I've found my grid, then I'm gonna move up to a higher power. So now that I have my grid centered, I'm looking through the microscope and what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna go this four by four and I'm just going to count grid by grid and it's easiest if I go this way. And there are four of these, this is a corner of the grid and there are four of these 16 square boxes on each side of the hemocytometer. And in your protocol, there's a better picture of the overall view of the grid. So I count those using this thing. Let's reset it, I wind it back. And once I count this one, I'm going to go across, count the other corner, count that one, go across, count the other corner. And if I have some outliers, I'll count one more. Keeping track of which ones I counted. Once you counted four on that side, we're going to, as Miss Amy says, cross the ditch, which is the center of the hemocytometer. And now we have four grids on this side. Count that one, count that one, count that one, and count that one. And like RJ said, if the number numbers are really similar in each grid, you don't have to count every single one. Just two to three per side. And so I'm going to take the average count, let's just say I had 50, 60, 40, and 50. Um, those are all my heme counts for each grid. Um, when I average it all together, my average would be 50. And basically just um, knowing how much space is there on each grid, we know that that's how many cells we have per milliliter. Okay, and you can multiply that number by the milliliters that you have in the flask to see how many total cells. And there are calculations also on the protocol to take the next steps in what you need to do with your cells. If you were going on to plate them, you would go back and you would take however many milliliters of your cells fill in your flask and add them to a tube and then go up to the total volume you need using your media and you would plate the appropriate volume in each well of your plate.